Okay, so in today's program, you're going to see some of the details that I go through and steps that I take to ensure that I am able to get clients a lot of results online and in person. Get ready. Welcome to another episode of Robert Harris Obsessed with Success. I am Robert Harris. Today we are obsessed about how I train clients. So in this video, I'm going to show you some of the steps that I do to try and get a client ready for whatever event they have to get ready for and how I show, and how I show some of the trainers that work for me how to deal with some of their clients as well. So I guess we'll get started. So first thing you want to establish is, is this a client that's going to be online or in person. I try to do more of my clients online now. I do have my ratio to online to in-person clients is 80-20. I have 80% in-person clients and actually 20% online clients. I'm trying to shift that to where it's a 50-50. Okay. And the reason why is after Hurricane Dorian, uh, it really kind of put a damper on business. Uh, and although I fared better than most, I still took a major hit. So just for future reference and financial stability, you want to have a mixture, okay? You don't want to put all your eggs in one basket, but you want to have half and half. Makes sense to me. Let's get started. So step number one, you want a detailed uh, goal, okay? You want a person that has a detailed goal in terms of what they really want to look like, feel like, perform like, whatever you're doing for them. And the reason why is you got to have a target to hit. Now, a lot of trainers, they deal with different type of people. I can do all sorts of diets, but the ones that I specialize in are contest prep and getting people ready for weddings. So literally, you do, uh, I do bodybuilding, women's physique, men's physique, bikini, figure, fitness, uh, and then get people ready for weddings as well, men and women. So I like that because I like people to actually follow through on the plan. It frustrates me, I can't lie, when you do a diet for somebody and they don't follow to a T. Most people are competing in a show or getting ready for a wedding, they, they seem to 90% follow it to a T. And that's what I need, that's what I like. Because I take pride in what I do and I don't want to be like with that guy that says, Ugh. there you go. Number two. I have to know, what do you want me to do for you? Do you want me to do your diet? Do you want me to do your training? Do you want me to do both? Because I charge accordingly. I can either do your diet by itself, I can do your training by itself, or I can do both. And there's a different price point for each one. And uh, it just works out better when I kind of do do both. Because a lot of people, I've been, I've been a trainer, competitor, IFBB judge, um, all this combined for over the last 20 years. So it's it's easy for me to just kind of take full reign. I like a person who just says, here, give me you, I do all the rest. Next, step number three, I like to ask people, uh, what's the timeline? You got to know what you're working with. If you, if you get a person that has five months to get ready for a show or a special event or like even a movie role, then all of a sudden you can you can change the world you can do anything like think about it if if you got a really good contest prep guru you can drop between five to 20 pounds in a month sometimes even 30. um i've only had one person ever do that but that was pretty extreme so in five months you can you can pretty much change the world you look like some out of a magazine now, if I get five weeks to work with someone, that's a little bit different. I can I can do some extreme things, trick it up, but more times better. But whatever you whatever you're working with, you know, shoot it out. I like a challenge. Yeah, number four, you have to let me know if you're a natural competitor or if you're on PEDs, uh, or so a natural competitor or enhanced competitor. So it lets me know if you're using supplements or using PEDs, which are performance enhancement drugs. And I can trick up diets using both. Uh, it doesn't bother me. Uh, I like the challenge, like I say. Uh, I just have to know ahead of time because if, if you say that you're on a natural person and I start doing a diet and it doesn't match up, 
uh, just honesty is best. Okay, this is a secure thing. Privacy is um, and discretion is, is my middle name. Okay, I fool people by saying it's Lee. Okay, we want to establish um, work ethic. This is a big one. You have people that start off so great, and then in the end they just drop off, and you're like, what happened? You you were doing so well. You you had a goal. You we were we were, we were because it gets personal. You know, it's like it's not it's not even the, it's not it's not even them. It's it's me and them. It's like I'm competing with them. Um, but they don't have the right work ethic. They it was harder than what they thought, and when the times got tough, they got going. That can't work. Got to have a got to have a strong, tough mind. Good work ethic as well. All right. Um, next. Um, let's see. Number six. Got to know. Do you have any injuries? This is just in case. I'm actually doing your your training program as well as your nutrition. Number seven. Need to know. Do you have any food allergies? This is for if I'm doing your diet. Okay, so if I'm not doing your diet, but I'm doing your training program, the first one and the last one counts. This one does not. Uh, now, if I'm doing both, then you got to answer both. Uh, next, need to know: um, Do you have what what medication you're on? The reason why that is is if I'm doing your diet or I'm doing your training program, and you don't tell me that you're on medication, things can go sideways. I once had a client ask him, "Are you on are you on any medication?" He said, "No." I put him on a treadmill, just get him warmed up. The guy collapsed on me. Turned out he was on beta blockers for his heart. So as soon as his heart rose, he collapsed. Not a good thing. Next time I had a, had a client that was on medication, didn't tell me, I put grapefruit on their diet. And grapefruit is very acidic. So what happens is it interferes with a lot of your medication. So that didn't turn out too well either. Though they weren't my fault, but that being said, Honesty is the best policy with your fitness and nutrition guru, okay? If they're getting you ready for something, just be honest. They're not going to talk it. Cool. We have to establish what type of diet you're going to even be on. There's so many different diets out there, and I can do 10 right, right off the bat. However, um, it's best if we just establish what your goal is. So if you're doing a bodybuilding um, show and you have a lot of muscle, not much fat. We can just pretty much do like a traditional contest prep diet where it's carbs, fats, uh, protein, and we'll just kind of do like a maybe a takeaway method. But if you have a lot of fat to you, you don't have a big appetite, we can do like a keto diet or we can do like a, a um, intermittent fasting diet. It's whatever you're into and depending on how much muscle you have to maintain. Mm, excuse me. So that's why I say, let's talk out what type of diet we're going to do. Because once we establish that, then we can establish a baseline diet for you to follow. Which is taking all your records. So your records are going to be like before pictures, um, your current weight, current body fat, uh, doing measurements, and then even throwing out a goal picture as well or a goal weight, something that you have to, you have something to shoot for. Because once you establish all that stuff right there, then people can stay focused. A lot of times people fall off the fall off from training because they have nothing to shoot for, no goals or whatever. And they don't know what they started from. So they'll, they have like a false sense of confidence. I don't like delusional people, even though. So number 10, so number 10, the goal is establishing um, a hell week. If you're getting ready for a contest or even a wedding, that last week before the event is critical. So I like to tell people, if you make it to this point, you're going to do great. But that last week is a killer. And the reason why is that's the week that you, you really just kind of Pay attention to every detail. You're seeing a person every day. They're sending you pictures or you're seeing them in the gym and you're weighing them almost every day and you're doing different funny things with their diets depending on how they're looking. So that's critical. And then the 11th thing that I do is I try to establish uh, periodization. So I say, okay, we're going we're gonna to get ready for this amount of time. Then we're going to have a off season and then we're going to have a pre-contest season. 
and they're gonna have a contest season. So I do, so I split it up between, th between three and four different periods of the year where I do your training and your diet and it fluctuates. It makes so that you get a, you get a slight mental and physical break. And that's it. Um, there's like one or two other details uh, that you probably want coming up against uh, in time, but for the most part, that's how I handle it. So hopefully it was informative. And if you need help with your diet or your training, hook me, uh, you know, come look me up. Uh, you can find me in the description box. Later.